Hey everyone. So in this article, I'm going to be talking about using an Apple Watch for monitoring sensors, for controlling outputs. I recently acquired an Apple Watch and I really enjoy it. I think it's a lot more accessible than an actual app on your phone or you know, a web browser interface or something like that whenever it comes to monitoring sensory data and controlling outputs configuring automation, stuff like that. One thing to keep in mind is whenever you're working on a watch app, you know, you have a, you have a small UI screen to work with. So you can't, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend trying to control 30 things, you know, and monitoring, you know, hundreds of sensors or anything like that. But this is fantastic, you know, if you want to monitor a temperature sensor, you want to turn something on or off, you know, quickly and easily, uh, you can just raise your wrist and do that. What we're going to be doing in this article is basically controlling a thermostat from our Apple Watch. We're going to be able to set a temperature and turn the system on or off and also be able to view the current temperature in the environment we are heating or cooling. So this is just an example of what you can do. This could absolutely be used for alarms. You know, say you're monitoring a piece of equipment and you want to say, you know, if this piece of equipment gets up to 300 degrees, you know, I need a notification. So you can twist your wrist and see what that current temperature is in that machine. You can set your alarm limit. There's so, so, so many things that you can do uh, with an Apple Watch or, or a smartwatch uh, of any sort. Um, like I said, we're gonna be doing a thermostat here. I've got the hardware laid out. I've got a one channel particle photon relay with a temperature sensor connected to that. I really like working with particle. They've got that cloud back end which means I can publish and monitor variables and call functions really easily through HTTP requests. Um, so really all I'm doing here is I am posting two or three variables, uh, one with the current temperature, one with the set temperature, which is the temperature I have the system set to, and one that displays the current status of the system, whether or not the system's currently on or off. And then I have a, a function to set the temperature and a function to turn off the system or turn on the system. You can load it up here and uh, whenever you first load the page it's going to sit here and it's going to say loading until it, uh, it actually makes a request to particle and gets those, that variable information that it needs and then it will update its display. We can see it's currently 81.3 degrees in here and the system is currently set to off uh, which we can see by the switch down at the bottom. We set that based on the current status when we load. And then we can see that the current set temperature for the system is 75. Now if I change the, the current set status of the temperature, um, we can see it's 81 degrees in here right now. Let's say I set it up to you know 82 and we're on AC here. I'm not doing heat. Uh, so I'm going to set it up to eight, 82 and then I'm going to click the set button. And we'll see as soon as we click the set button, the AC switch actually flips on. I've got this set, so basically if I change the temperature and then I set it, more than likely I want that system to kick on and start running. So in that call to set the temperature, I also turn the system on. Um, of course, I can just click the switch to manually turn the system on or off. Um, we can see it's on right now and it's set to 82 degrees and it's currently 81.3 so of course the AC isn't going to kick on. So let's go ahead and uh, set our system down to let's say 75. So we'll uh, scroll down to 75 and hit set. And we'll see that the relay on the board just clicked on um, and that is basically because the set temperature is more than 2 degrees below the current temperature. I've got this set for a two degree uh, variant swing. That's hard coded into my particle firmware. You could absolutely make that a function call and give yourself a, another spot on this display to, uh, to set your degree swing. We got it set down to 75. Um, current temperature is 81, so of course the relay is going to kick on to run the AC. Now I can manually switch off the AC by hitting the switch. And then we'll see the relay on the board goes off. We're, uh, we're monitoring the temperature, we're setting a temperature, um, and then we're turning the system either on or off. That's really all that there is to it. Now this view that we're looking at here is the app interface view. Um, this is kind of where the meat and potatoes of your watch app are. But we also have a glance view where you can twist your wrist up and swipe to view some information. Um, so we'll go ahead and take a look at that real quick. 
And this is basically what our glance view looks like. It's going to tell us what the current temperature is in the room. It's going to tell us what our set temperature is and what the AC state is, whether or not it's on or off. So if we look at this, we see our set temperature is 75 and it's currently 81.4, but the AC is off. Well, that's weird. So from the glance uh, interface, all you have to do is uh, click, and that's going to bring up your app interface. And we'll load this up and we'll say, oh, well, the system's off. So we'll just click this switch. Now the system's on. Now if we look at our glance again, we'll say, okay, the current temperature is 81.3 degrees, the set temperature is 75, and the AC is currently on. And you could absolutely do everything that I'm doing here on uh, an Android watch, on a Pebble watch, probably just about any watch, really. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll have a, few, a full article on Hackster on this, um, so be sure and check that out. It's going to have all the source code for our particle application that we're going to run in the module and the full source code for this watch app. Just go to hackster.io and check out Control Everything's hub, and you'll see the full article there. So thanks for watching, and have a great day.